Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another League of Legends scrim. I'm Rapid and this time we're going to see Absolute Legends go up against the members of Team Dynamic. Now Absolute Legends Robert X. Lee Zekent will be playing Wukong Slushi, their AP mid on Katarina. And then we also have Spellzy bottom lane as support with Yoda in the jungle. These guys are all together forever, no matter how long, and it always seems like they have to have a sub for whatever tournament uh, they're entering in, but it actually looks like uh, Zekant's gonna be scouting out the middle lane. He will see that uh, Nintendo Dex is actually gonna be back in the jungle? That's a little bit interesting, but we do actually have Zion Spartan running Vladimir. For a while, Nintendo was top lane and Zion Spartan was up, uh, or Zion Spartan was in the jungle, but uh, yeah, it actually is gonna be returned turned back to the way it used to be. Nintendo Dex in the jungle on Skarner. Now I actually could have skilled the crystal and slash and flashed in onto Yoda, but A, that'd be extremely aggressive, and B, I'm not sure the slow would have been enough to keep him from getting away, or even to make him flash just because he knew that the rest of his team was there. So uh, team dynamic, a uh, little bit of an interesting uh, lineup issue. Zig, apparently AFK for the time being, and by K I actually mean you know school and other important IRL things, so it does look like we will see don't mash me is uh, pretty much their official sub for now. 70 AD, AD base starting attack damage versus just 66 from Robert X Lee. So Graves starting out with a little bit of a disadvantage. And that's really probably runes. He might go for some extra um, damage to minions. Freeze your last hitting. Not exactly sure what he's running there or if Graves just you know starts out 4 AD down on Corky. Uh, also one of the reasons Corky is one of the best uh, AD carries right now, and actually, Nintendo's gonna go over, yeah, straight away to the red buff, guarded by Pixel. He's gonna look in here to uh, get a little bit of a uh, stun action onto Spellzy. Bob's it's done a little bit early, so he's not gonna have his uh, shield of the Radiant Dawn for a while. Uh, Nintendo's actually gonna pull the red buff around the corner. It's 3v5 right now, but Nintendo is actually taking damage from the red buff, and that's all they were doing. Really great play there from Robert X. Lee and Spellzy. This duo has been together for a while, and they actually uh, did a really good job here at denying the red buff steal. See, actually, Contrary to popular opinion, you don't have to actually steal uh, the red buff. All you have to do is get it to reset, and then it's not really worth the jungler's time. You can already see Yoda going in for a little bit of counter jungling himself, and oh my goodness, what on earth is going on? Let's check out these lanes a little bit. We will have Zekant going up against Paradoxical. Mid AP Soraka, even after the nerfs, going up against Wukong. This is before the Soraka changes. So, uh, Yoda actually gonna get spotted out here, has his blue buff, so they will know that. Uh, so he just kind of walked through middle and said, You know what? I'm, I'm here, so peace out, guys. You know where I am, which is not really the greatest decision, but definitely needs to get that early game jungle, uh, done as fast as humanly possible. Bottom lane, a lot of aggression, forcing the flash out there from Don't Ask Me. Actually, not, uh, forcing the flash. He just Valkyrie away. That's going to be down for another 17 seconds. He is running Flash Ghosts, so double escape summoners, or I guess aggressive summoners, uh, in case you want to consider it that way. Uh, the cleanse already used uh, by Robert X. Lee to get out of uh, Pixel's stun, so that was the reason. Don't mash me a Valkyrie away. But it is a little bit interesting to see uh, Paradoxical versus not... Interestingly enough, not Slushy will be going up against Zekent, and uh, there is Yoda getting a little bit of a slow off, but uh, not able to get the first auto attack, which would have applied that red buff for a little bit of a true damage damage over time. I was going to say true damage dot, and I realized how redundant that was when I said it the wrong way. So uh, Slushy going top lane. Top lane Katarina, something that is in fact uh, pretty viable. I've actually seen a lot of uh, professional top laners run that. Robert actually taking a turret shot and spells you pretty low as well. Does have a QW, so it's pretty much all you need for, for uh, when you're playing Alistar. Uh, mid lane, ooh, Zekant actually uh, something that Wukong is gonna be able to do relatively effectively against Soraka is that uh, crushing blow is actually going to deal, uh, or yeah, shred the enemy's armor by 30%. So uh, when you look at the uh, benefit from Astral Blessing, that's 25 bonus armor. So 35% when you have almost 100 armor is actually going to completely decimate that uh, armor increase. Back to what I was saying, in case there's not action going on all the way around the map. Uh, top lane, there's the Q, not wanting to go in for a W. Uh, he's worked his health all the way back up and uh, really does not want to take any unnecessary turret shots for the moment. It looks like we're going to have Yoda coming up in here. Paradoxical, oh my goodness, I feel like if Zekin had gone in on that uh, and all in, I might have been enough. But he would have taken a turret shot, would have been close no matter what. 
One of the reasons Katarina is good top lane is because you have a lot of wave clear, so you can keep your turret from being shoved in. You have incredible burst and escape, so the only problem is that uh, you don't have a lot of harassment, or uh, not of harassment, of sustain in lane. That's kind of one of the reasons you want to see a Hextech Revolver. But now uh, Katarina's actually going to lose some CS to turret. There is the pool coming out from Vladimir to uh, just avoid a little bit of the slow from Malphite, and that's why Malphite is really, really weak early on. You really rely on that move speed difference and also red buff. Uh, ooh, Zion Spartan trying to check and see if Zoda Yoda was still there. I'm pretty sure that did not actually steal life. Either that or we're going to see a transfusion running all the way across the map. Scarter coming down bottom lane. I don't think he's been spotted by awards, so he's actually a little bit incognito for the moment. Could go back around, but Spellsy actually coming up here to check things out. Going to get jumped on immediately. There is the slow, the red buff proc, and we're seeing Pixel kind of trying to body block against Robert X. Lee, which does uh, kind of uh, fulfill the same thing in both lanes. Top lane, there's actually a lot of action going on. Both ignites, burn the flash out from Zion Spartan. He sort of slips off my screen there for a second, but escapes with about 40 HP. So uh, really equal trades by both top laners. And Slushy still in lane, has the cooldowns, and uh, really I feel like could actually know. Zion Spartan would win the one uh, the one up trade, but he's not going to be able to kill Slushy immediately. So I think Slushy has enough health to be able to shove that in, but uh, not wanting to push things too much. Zion Spartan does have his Sanguine Pool. You can use that to just clear things out. Now with the pool gone, there is the flash in, and will he actually take one more turret shot? Yeah, so it's going to be a one for one trade. I feel like, yeah, there was a one for one. If he had gotten in there fast enough, he could have maybe surprised Zion Spartan, but with the flash, he just really wanted to uh, take that trade and move things along the way he thought they should go. Paradoxal, probably going to have to flash over the wall. Yeah, he gets a really long flash, so we'll be able to get out of dodge alive. He's going to be able to go back between his turrets. Be safe for now. And after a little bit of a drink of water, we are back. Into the scrim, there is the heal, and uh, really you can see that's uh, armor mitigation, not uh, or extremely effective rather. Paradox will have to walk back between the stirs, even with double Doran's rings, it's just not enough. I really feel like you need that glacial shroud, you need that frozen heart on the Soraka to be uh, viable in that mid lane. I mean, usually it's not that effective, but this time around it's actually going to be extremely effective against Wukong. Now it's uh, you're gonna have 30% of that armor shredded off from a uh, crushing blow, but it's gonna be, uh, I guess I would say, not that effective because you're gonna get some of that armor back. Also, you're gonna get the attack speed slow, which which is going to help you out against Wukong, although he is somewhat of an AD burst caster just because of the way his ult works. He does have Cyclone available and it's 124, so it's actually a 1.2 scaling, so it's just uh, pretty, uh, it's, it's either, yeah, I think it's 120% of total AD, so pretty impressive if you ask me. Slushy actually uh, starting to get pushed in here, uh, is uh, undergoing the uh, trials and travails that you have when you're a melee going up against Vladimir, it just kind of pokes you down, but Slushy trying to sustain through this has a Hextech Revolver and definitely will be able to sustain just by throwing some daggers. That's going to get him about 40 to 50 HP every time it does hit all five minions. And uh, Zion Spartan super pushed up without a ward top lane, really susceptible to ganks, but here we will see uh, Yoda coming around here. Does he get the smite? No, he does not actually smite that in time. It will, in fact, go over to Paradoxical. So best of both worlds here for Team Dynamic. They were actually able to A, save the blue buff b get it on the champion they wanted and uh looks like second going to go in for that crushing blow you can see how effective that armor shred is against paradoxical and so really interesting picks here and it's something that's uh, we've seen a lot out of uh a little bit of uh you know, I guess a non-standard teams. You've seen uh, Absolute Legends pull off uh, this a couple times in the most recent TSM invitation. I believe they run, ran Jace mid, but only after Monomaniac Ferris, formerly MTWNA, or a picture of a goose. Well, they've been through quite a few lineup changes. They actually ran Jace mid a bunch that tournament, and I think Mandatory Cloud actually ran Riven mid once. So, hey man, you gotta look at these emerging strategies. Jace mid was actually something that uh, was a, sort of a pseudo secret strat that a bunch of uh, teams were practicing before, or rather in preparation for the Season 2 Championships, but uh, I guess I wouldn't say it got leaked, but it's just ridiculously good, so... Now, putting those sort of 80 burst casters mid has been uh, sort of famous for a while, but, uh, ooh, actually, Paradoxical gonna get jumped on. There is the Wombo Combo! One knock-up, two knock-ups, and wham-bam, thank you, ma'am! Zekant going to be uh, the recipient of uh, one 
more kill in that mid lane. I guess I say one more kill, but it's actually only the second kill of the game for Absolute Legends, and I'm actually gonna hit backspace. I thought actually it was gonna go happen top lane just because of that dive potential, well, much more dive potential bottom lane. There's gonna be no turn aggro actually on Absolute Legends, so a uh, really great job there, but it, uh, it looks like there is the flash, the pulverize. Will it be enough damage? Don't match me goes down, but so does Spellzy. Uh, here comes in a Nintendo X. There's the flash, the stun. Will Robert actually be able to dash over the wall? He fail flashes. Can he dash over just with quick draw? But no, he gets suppressed. And that's gonna be one more kill. Three to three, tying things up here. Team Dynamic bringing it back. Top lane a, an immense amount of pressure uh, placed there by Zion Spartan on a Slushia. He's actually taking a couple turret shots. Slushia making the most out of that uh, opportunity. Going in for a little bit of harassment and Vladimir now down about half health. Going to be able to heal up off of that. Uh, both the 80 sort of pseudo burst casters, although... Uh, I guess you'd say Vladimir is a little bit more of an AoE mage, but uh, low cooldowns are the uh, the order of the day top lane. We're going to have Yoda top, uh, walks the reward, and with Vladimir playing as carefully as he is, you can kind of tell that Yoda maybe knows something's up. Zion Spartan not going to use his pool just yet, uh, really baiting Yoda out. He's going to go to the brush and uh, start to DPS. Yoda does not go in on that. Uh, I think that's uh, with the AoE that Vladimir has, he could actually 1v2 relatively successfully, especially with, uh, ooh, but not with with Nintendo Dex coming in through the jungle. Really wanted to look for the dive. Zion Spartan walking behind the tree. He's going to start to get DPS. There is way too much damage. He's going to take the dot damage, pop his own ultimate. Slushy will not go down. And where's Nintendo? Dude, he was right there. If he had been waiting in that tri brush, you'd have a dead Slushy right now. And Yoda didn't take that much damage. But still, that really would have been the position to be in. However, mid lane looks like we're going to have a lot of pressure put on Sakant. But with as low as Paradoxical is, you really have to be careful about going into 2v1 situations where there's a chance that uh, the one guy you're going up against could still pick off, uh, you know, whoever's low for your combo. Speaking of combos, we have had kills in absolutely every lane uh, so far, so action going on all over the map, and uh, already a, uh, well, I guess you'd say a 600 gold lead, not really insurmount insurmountable by any means, just because it is so small. I mean, it's 12 minutes into the game. If we saw a lead like this, it may be like five or six minutes it'd be a little bit wow pixel using the auto attack reset from sh the uh radiant uh, shield of the dawn awesomeness scarter jumping in there there is the zenith blade but as uh, shield of the radiant dawn is not available there is going to be uh, the suppressive alt pulling robert actually away from his turret but with spells the ulted nobody's really gonna i I'm not even gonna go for an analysis of that. I was like, well, nobody's gonna die here because I didn't see Yoda coming in, but oh my goodness. That ult definitely made his presence known, walks up the lane, and that's exactly what Skarner did. Nintendo Dex just uh, turned on his crystalline exoskeleton, ran up the lane, and uh, as energized as he was from his passive, not as fast as Yoda, just slams on in there with an unstoppable force, picks up a kill there. Pixel didn't even stand a chance. I mean, it was pretty much, oh, there's a mount, oh, there's a mouth i'm dead that sucks but speaking of things that suck top lane a lot of damage going on to zion spartan he's actually gonna have the healing mitigated from both transfusion and the health uh potion that uh, was sticking during their duration of katarina's ultimate and now well besides a lot of damage going in mid lanes that can't actually uh Trading equally. That's pretty impressive uh, by all accounts and purposes. Uh, what I was talking about top lane now with those magic penetration boots, Hextech Revolver, and another amplifying tone for maximum AP. Looks like uh, Slushy has finally established lane dominance. You can see Zion Spartan uh, actually juking the double golems, just using them as his personal mana battery, pretty much. I don't actually think you trade effectively as far as health is concerned uh, when you have below 100. Uh, Below 100 ability power with that uh, Hextech Revolver. So, uh, Zion Spartan able to heal back up, and really, this is the strength of Vladimir. If you're losing lane, you can start to heal up. And once again, we see Yoda coming around here. He's going to check the bush for any form of wards, and Absolute Legends looking to make a play here. Nintendo Dex is in the area, but going to get zoned out by Yoda and Spellsy. Ward in the bush is going to cause Yoda to possibly go back in there, but there is the Q. The Unstoppable Force right on top of Nintendo Dex. An excellent Solar Flare coming out from Leona, but it is just not enough the robert actually able to cleanse up through all of that and now pixel in the danger zone does he have flash no don't match me could be the next to fall he's starting to dps as i can but uh with spells right there 
doing the good support thing. <laughs> wow, Zakenta uh, stealthing out using his clone. Unfortunately, it was hit by Phosphorus Bombs, so uh, Robert Exley knows all and tells all. Actually, uh, I guess that would have been... Don't mash me. I think I call him Robert X Lee. That was not what I meant to say. But uh, gonna be a free and clear dragon first dragon of the game at well almost 15 minutes. Four absolute legends. They're starting to pull ahead in that gold count. I was commenting just a few minutes ago how it was in fact uh, only 600 gold difference. Now much much higher as that is seven to four and kills about a 2,000 gold difference at 15 minutes into the game. So in just three short minutes, uh, the gold lead has increased by about 1500. So that's exactly uh, how key all the super farming that's uh, Absolute Legends has been doing. I mean, when you look at their builds, ooh, a haunting guy is coming out from Katarina. I love this build because not only does it uh, sort of embrace the new meta of massive, massive magic penetration, it also is really effective for top laners because as a top laner, you have to be beefy, you have to have sustain, you have to be that kind of tanky bruiser. And uh, really, Absolute Legends sort of embracing uh, what a lot of high elo teams have been uh, figuring out, and that is that you can viably put AP bruisers top lane. Uh, I guess rather squishy AP assassins top lane that are less... Uh, less Traditional? I guess that's the word I was thinking of. Nintendo X comes in for a little bit of pressure, keeps Zakent from diving too far on Paradoxical, and really Paradoxical having a little bit of a rough time. He goes for a Blasting Wand. Why do you have a Blasting Wand? I really feel like either a Chalice of Harmony for just infinite mana, or possibly something along the lines. That's Malphite Ult. Yeah, you know what? I was I was way too busy talking about a little bit of analysis, so definitely a my bad. But uh, Yoda's done that actually a couple times. It's just like oh, Malphite's on the map. Malph oh, and somebody died because there's an absolute zero, and he teleports halfway across the world and explodes someone, which you know makes sense because it's a fair and balanced champion. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually pretty balanced, but uh, really really good in certain situations. And those certain situations include when you have a perfectly innocent Soraka sitting behind her turret, just waiting, waiting, waiting to get wombo combo. This is unfortunately her ugly old skin look at those feet holy cow two out of ten for sure would not summon uh, yeah, so we got uh, the members of Team Dynamic kind of falling a little bit behind. Now down about 3,000 gold, so you can see that every minute or two that passes, they're falling behind about another 1,000 gold. So as uh, things get too far into the... Wow, that ward is actually out of turret placement? Or turret vision. That's actually pretty impressive. I'm not pulling a Jaws and seeing it on the wrong side of the map, but I definitely realized that... Ooh, Second actually uh, could make a play here. Is he going to be able to get it in now and there? Yoda will actually... Yes, he will will fall. Zekant gonna get suppressed brought back into the middle of the enemy team. Gonna try to Nimbus strike out, but Zekant uh, will get taken down. Zion Spartan dropping so much damage, but bottom lane there was in fact a kill picked up on a pixel uh, and uh, bottom turret taken out. So that's gonna bring the gold lead a little bit back towards uh, team dynamic? No. Absolute Legends, they're kind of crushing down in that regard. Slushy actually diving through that turret and there is gonna going to be the counter turret taken by Team Dynamic, one to one, but still a four kill advantage and a two, three thousand gold advantage. So yeah, things definitely two thousand gold. Uh, definitely going pretty well. There is the ult coming out from Paradoxal. He's gonna also uh, transfuse himself. So not transfuse, but uh, bless himself astrally. Yep. Those astral blessings. I'm pretty sure I could say something about those. But you know what? We're going to keep it clean. PG-13 and Zion Spartan top lane appreciates that because that's about how old he is. No, just kidding. He's a little bit uh, older. I think he's actually a junior. I have no idea. But uh, the, here comes in second. Dropping massive DPS. Spins the win all over Zion Spartan and takes him down for the shutdown. Picking up a little bit of extra gold. Do I have chat turned off? No, I do not. But apparently... There's just been no chat for the entire game. I actually have to check that in my interface options. We have uh, doo -doo -doo, all chats, more options. Yeah, it's there. Just absolutely no talking so far. So that's a little bit rough. Or maybe this is just a glitch with the chat client. Fortunately enough for our heroes, we are actually going to see Absolute Legends pushing in here onto Team Dynamic. They recognize they are in Gank City and uh, Yoda coming up through the Dragon area. Didn't actually get spotted there by... Uh, oh yeah, he actually did. There's a ward here. Good guy ward. Uh, Paradoxical getting it jumped on. A little bit of damage, but... Uh, 
Yeah, that's what happens when you're Malphite, and you don't go AP. I mean, even with AP, it would have been a real stretch to do damage to Soraka. She pretty much just starts out with those magic resist blues just because of her passive consecration. Uh, so it means you can run cooldowns for your blues or really whatever you want because you don't have to run a magic penetration unless you just want ridiculous, ridiculous tankiness in the middle lane. However, really not that effective against Wukong as uh, Zekant definitely uh, put the pain on a paradoxical. And now we figure out what happens when you do have that battle mage Soraka. Look at Absolute Legends. They're just jumping in here on that turret. Slushy was uh, a little bit too far in there, but did not matter. Solar Flare does not matter either, as Zion Spartan will go down here. So it's a one for one trade right now with Slushy and Yoda. Super low Yoda getting it. Pulled into the enemy team. He is going to go down at the hands of Nintendo X. Now, Spellsy, super, super low. There's no turret there to avail him. But the flash in and the silence. Paradoxical coming out with the transfuse, or I guess it's infused, not transfuse. Popping the ultimate ability is going to save Slushy for now. Get him out of harm's way, and he's just going to go back in the top bush. Guarded a little bit by Zekin with those double buffs, able to uh, sort of help him out in the time of need. However, Team Dynamic taking this opportunity to go ahead and push it through that middle turret. They're going to start tanking the turret, but they do have enough damage. Scarner, you can see, he's just walking right out of the way as Paradoxical picks that one up for a 3-2 turret deficit to still... Not in favor of Team Dynamic, but you look at where they do have turrets taken, and there's two turrets taken middle lane. That is really, really impressive, especially so early at 20 minutes, and that actually signals that uh, this game may be a lot closer than, in fact, the gold count does... Uh convey. Uh, do we actually see an Abyssal Scepter? Yes, Vladimir, having picked that up for easier laning phase against Katarina, now actually is going to be able to uh, pull out some big plays with Soraka as pretty much nobody is going to be resistant to absolutely any form of uh, well, magic damage. Blue team picking up the dragon. Absolute Legend is going to take that one down again, and uh, things really looking good for them. You got an Aegis on the way from Malphite with double gold for fives. Hasn't actually picked up any form of boots, and this is not the Hotshot GG style of jungle. He's uh, really more well known for just going Boots 5 and an early oracles as fast as humanly possible and uh, really the benefit to doing that would have probably helped out Absolute Legends in their earlier roam strats but it does kind of set you behind as you are super far behind on your gold per prize. You're just looking to make as many plays as humanly possible and speaking of making plays, Zekin actually stealing away the red buff and then stealthing away with his clone will be able to make it out of there alive. Oh my goodness, the plays from Zekin he's actually been uh, really, really good at not only dominating that middle lane but also being able to kind of snowball that advantage into say, say taking buffs to get uh, transitioning in middle lane as well as uh, actually wow what on earth yeah, so that's, uh, that's a lot of damage coming out from Zyospart. He's actually going to take a lot of damage in return. Continues to get DPS there by Zekin. Does he have a Frozen Mallet? No, he's just got a really lucky Phage Slow, which actually did give a lot of, uh, well, not health. Gave anti-health. It's a magical stick that gives you anti-health. It's like that, uh, I think there was a picture on the interwebs that said, uh, I'm going to heal you back to death with my magic wellness stick. Or something along those lines. Second turret, third turret actually, of the game taken down by Team Dynamic. That was a uh, good guy. Minions taking that one out before Slushy could quite DPS them all out. Haunted guys completed and along with a Hextech Revolver, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what Slushy goes for as his next item. Death Cap, I would love to see that just because hey he has a little bit of tankiness a lot of sustain in his uh well his own ultimate as well as his aoe farming capabilities to make the most of that spell vamp and uh so i'd love to see like an easily large rod could also go to finish in the will of the ancients and there is the needlessly large rod and also the blasting wand jumping up over 100 magic damage uh or ability power i guess that's basically the same thing uh 22 5 that's a really weird way of saying 225, but uh, yeah, that is the amount of AP that Slushy has. When you check out his counterpoint, or rather his uh, laning partner, Zion Spartan, so he has just a cool 200, but way, way tankier, and actually has a lot more sustain thanks to uh, some AoE of his own, as well as the lifesteal, or rather life gain, health gain that you get from Transfusion. And I probably should have brought a lot more water because I am absolutely famous. After doing a lot of casting in preparation for a couple of events, we actually have 
No, a lot of stuff coming up, but uh, I didn't mean to say we as in the ro royal third person we. I just like, hey, pronouns, let's go with that one. And then you realize the grammar is actually important and you don't just get to go through the English language's pockets for loose change. I think that was a mess up of the actual original pun slash quote thing. But Ping is going off on the top lane on to Zekini, back in the vision of a ward, but he's actually out of there. And that means that uh, the jungler, or the, rather the mid lane, is not on the map. It's 45 for the time being, should. Absolutely anyone from Team Dynamic want to force something. There is the Q, or rather the uh, W headbutting from Spellzy. Uh, well, headbutting Nintendo away. Not really wanting a lot to do with that. Headbutt, pulverized, or rather pulverized. Where is the headbutt? Dion Spartan forced the pull out of that. Sanguine pull is down. There is another headbutt in onto Team Dynamics and Nintendo decks. He's going to get away from around the back, but he's going to jump up right back in onto Slushy. Alden Katarina suppressing him right into the middle. There is the Wombo combo. Double knockups. Will Dion Spartan live? He does pull. He flashes out. He's actually going to be able to get out of here alive, but no Zegan has a. Zion Spartan seeking laser or something along those lines. The Valkyrie back in from Don't Mash Me. It looks like actually Pixel could go down here, but one more auto attack from Corky will pick up the kill. And that is a two for three trade in favor of Team Dynamic. How do you do that when you're so far behind in gold and kills and then you realize they are not that far behind at all? And it is all the plays for all the days and all the ways if you want to go that far. Actually got a chance to play on the Brazilian server uh, this weekend and uh, yeah, Pretty darn awesome. A lot of Mordekaisers floating around there, as you would suspect, but uh, a lot of APEs as well, so didn't really see that one coming. But hey, you know, you got to take what you can get. A lot of people uh, transferring over there, and also uh, got a chance to check out the Turkish server. If you guys have not been over to, I think it's uh, tr.leagueoflegends.com, go check it out over there. I actually uh, live in the central United States and was able to get about 150 ping there, so not bad at all. Got to play with awesome Turkish fans, as well as at Riot Nate on Twitter. He actually uh, plays a lot over there as he's over there setting up their servers right now. So that was your non-related uh, or non-scrim related League of Legends news for the time being. Back to the matter at hand. Let's take a little bit of opportunity to sort of uh, get a little bit more of a macro focus on the game. Who's got what? Where's the gold? And uh, what is going on as far as positioning is concerned? We got uh, almost that death cap. Is actually uh, is that in range for Katarina? You look at Katarina, and you actually see she has 973. So she's looking for a couple hundred more gold before she goes back and picks up her death cap. What's Vladimir sitting on uh, as far as that top lane? I really feel like that's kind of going to be the way this game does progress. Uh, actually, has a haunting guys as well as. A needlessly large rod so you can see that that early choice to go for an abyssal really robbed him of that death cap that Katarina has so I mean let me go ahead and organize people based on where they actually land I probably should have done this to start things off with but there's gonna be an instantaneous jump in on the Nintendo X a fully channeled ult there from Slushy but uh, Nintendo just ridiculously tanky also having that ultimate and uh, heal there from Paradoxical actually it wasn't the ult but uh, yeah Spellsy and Yoda know what's up they're gonna really try to take down that uh, really prevent a lot of the map vision with that oracles on Yoda, but as well as a lot of the farm capabilities, denying those, uh, well, both the uh, Wraith camp as well as the red buff. Zekin barely getting out of there alive. Wow, that guy lives with no HP. Actually has a Negatron cloak, so he recognizes who is strong where. Robert actually going to be able to successfully take down this red buff from Team Dynamic. And really, TD's kind of had a back and forth journey through here. You saw them win that last team fight, 3 to 2, and then uh, go on to, uh, well, basically just survive, push out their lanes, get the farm that they needed, and take a welcome respite, nigh a breather, uh, able to uh, sort of recover from a little bit of a really rough uh, start to the game just because of some wacky picks. And lane counters coming out from Team uh, Absolute Legends. I don't know. I guess you, you don't want to call them Absolute Legends Esports, Absolute Legends Gaming, Team Absolute Legends. They're just playing Absolutely Legends because uh, I guess more known for their Dota 2 team and uh, possibly their previous uh, League of Legends team, which had a lot of relations with like SK and CLGEU and a lot of wackiness along those lines, but they have found themselves a new North American team. Oh, looks like another dragon going to be taken here from Absolute Legends. Nobody from Team Dynamic looking to uh, sort of contest that by any means. Nintendo X is just going to go back, probably pick up his Aegis? No, he just goes back and takes an Oracles. Knows there's hella wards in his jungle, and oh my goodness, one ward, two, three, four, five, six, seven wards placed by Absolute Legends. Apologies for that little technical difficulty. Yeah, Pixel got annihilated. All right, well, now we know. 
Uh, but uh, that will mean that Zekin's ultimate is unfortunately down. It's going to be down for another 70 seconds, but he knows exactly what Zion Spartan is up to, thanks to what I mentioned a little bit earlier. Immense amounts of wards here in this upper jungle. Now, ward coverage will reveal Nintendo X. Going to jump in there, force the flash out, but with the Malphite ult, you just cannot leave. Don't mean to be quoting too much, but uh, yeah, that's going to be one dead Skarner. And essentially, that's a double kill. Well, I mean, it's already a double kill because Don't Mash Me died as well. But uh, that was, uh, you know, essentially like killing Skarner twice because it did just waste the 400 gold, taking that away from him. So it's kind of like, uh, I guess, removing one of the kills that he had. So I don't know exactly how that math works out too well. But uh, yeah, you don't want to die as soon as you bought Oracles. And what did that Oracles clear? Nothing. It didn't clear the wards in the bush. It didn't clear any of the other seven wards, most of which have died out, so he wouldn't have been able to clear them anyways. But uh, it does look like we will have Robert X Lee sort of just rotating top lane, pulling a double lift. Hey, there's stuff to be done across the map, but no! It's far time. And what is he actually going to be able to pick up with his ultimate? Has a Quicksilver Sash, so he basically is ult immune. And that's the great thing about Quicksilver Sash. I mean, sure, it's kind of that anti Malzahar. Why are you actually in this game? I don't know. But it looks like he will be going for uh, not only his last Whisper, but, uh, well, actually, he already has that completed, but also his Infinity Edge. Starting to round out that uh, sort of late game super farmed. I am as big as I possibly can build, can be 80 carry build. Could go for something crazy like another Phantom Dancer or Bloodthirst or something along those lines. But no, he has that Quicksilver Sash. Actually going to be in lieu of like, oh, is he going to get ulted over the wall? You can ult over that wall as Skarner if both people are pressed together or right by that little light, which signals not only where like Nidalee can jump over, but also the closest possible uh, point in the wall on Baron. I'm supposed to drop in yet another warden here behind Baron. This guy has bought so many wards. I mean, he... Even with all the wards he's been buying, he still manages to pick up double gold per fives as well as an Aegis. Looking for that Kindle gem next for Shirelia's, and uh, with a ward placed over the wall from Pixel, Absolute Legends could actually look to pick here. I mean, there is a little bit of a detection skill there by Nintendo, shoving out, revealing spells in Yoda in the brush. But uh, as the rest of Absolute Legends is all the way here around this Baron buff, this will be the play. They're going to take down the ward that they know Pixel dropped inside. Once that dies, they're just going to keep continuing to that's actually really redundant uh they are going to continue to try to get vision here on this baron and prevent absolute legends from baiting this really this is uh i guess you'd consider this one of the newer strats and there is the q the w missed spells you way out of position don't really want to go skarner ult him by any means so uh, uh flash down on alistar it was a play and i guess it could have gone a lot better because as he's uh as Alistar, you can flash over the wall, get the knockup from Pulverize, and then headbutt your unsuspecting and unwitting victim back over the Baron wall and either force them to flash out as well, which still leaves you in a pretty crappy position, but also, I actually think that you might... No, no, they'd impact and then only the enemy would go over the wall, but yeah. Spells he zoning out Nintendo X. Nothing that Team Dynamic can do about that. A Baron taken here for Absolute Legends. They're actually going to be able to catch out Zion Spartan. He's got a red buff proc on him by Robert X Lee. And uh, what is Zion Spartan doing? He recognizes he has Sanguine Pool. But there is the Malphite right on top of absolutely everything. It's Zion Spartan actually uh, dropping it well, waiting until the last second. Until... Uh, Going for that Zognas after his pool. He's going to get an instant gem by Katarina. Knows that if she gets a kill, she can instantly refresh that. So just goes instantly for the Shunpo. And the only surviving members left alive. That's actually pretty redundant as well. For Team Dynamic, are going to be Paradoxical and Nintendo X. Look at how farmed Paradoxical is. And look how little that matters. I mean, sure, she has a double Abyssal Scepter. That's not going to work too well. As they do not stack. Or Offensive auras don't stack. As a lot of magic resistance. Going for a Rylize next. I mean, sure, that's a super cool item to have on Soraka. But is that going to be enough? You got a Baron buff, the Absolute Legend pushing in here for what could be finally the last push of the game. Nintendo X going to go down with one more crit, but no way. Managed to survive. Gets back on his fountain, and this could be the game. One Nexus turret down, another Nexus turret down, and Absolute Legends will actually bring home this scrim versus Team Dynamics. So congratulations to them for picking up the victory. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked what you saw, leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can keep bringing you all this amazing League of Legends content. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you got some feedback, I'd love to hear it. I actually had a really awesome chance to cast the Razor uh, ARAM Invitational over the weekend with Four Court Jester and get a lot of really positive feedback from that as well. If you guys want me to do something different, want me to cover more things, I'm there for you. Let me know what you think. 
Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all of the uh, wonderful things that you guys do for me. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.